Kotzebue is a town of a little over 2,000 people, 80% of them Eskimo, and still basically a subsistence culture. This is a harsh, wild place at the end of the earth, pressed against the cold Arctic sea. Hunting and fishing are primary sources of livelihood. Kotzebue sits on a peninsula near the location of the ancient Bering Land Bridge which was the root of those earliest Americans on their trek from Asia to this new land. There is archeological evidence here of settlements going back for millennia. It's this historical perspective that gives the native people of this region the strength to resist the pressures of an imported culture and to preserve their own ways. We've lived in this area for thousands of years. Uh, this is an ancient, ancient living area for the Inupiaq people. And we've lived in harmony with nature. Uh, we've lived pretty much in harmony with ourselves. And we believe that the values that we currently have are going to allow us to continue to live here in harmony with, uh, with nature and one another. The native people here have a true resource in their own proven traditions. Modern cultural innovations are accepted when they serve a purpose, but there is an increasing awareness that for a hunting and gathering people, the old proven ways work best. Here in this living museum of the Arctic, the elders of the village preserve knowledge of this endangered culture to share with visitors who get an unusual opportunity to observe the native culture. In the museum, the elders have created a vital ongoing school to pass their wisdom about their own world to the youth of the culture. Ever since Admiral Perry, the people of the lower 48, have been learning that the Eskimo approach is uniquely suited to a unique environment. These handmade parkas trap body heat and provide ventilation. And the blanket toss, which is now a lively game, served a real survival need in the predominantly flat land with no hills or trees for vantage points. Hunters were tossed up as many as 30 feet into the air, allowing them to survey the terrain and spot game in the distance. This Eskimo version of the latter served a purpose and worked. The imported technology doesn't always work as well as the time-tested ways in this environmentally sensitive land. Here we see a house which must be fitted with an active refrigeration system to keep it from melting the permafrost beneath it and sinking into the ground. Like the tundra around it, the culture of these hardy people is a fragile and sensitive thing. Tundra, once scarred, remains scarred forever. These people know that they're trying to reverse an historical trend by refusing to change the basic elements of their culture. But they feel that it's worth the effort. They know that they are survivors, but they don't just want to survive. They want to survive with dignity and joy. And as it is with the Eskimo, struggling to maintain their culture while integrating into the modern world, so it is with all of Alaska. Alaska is a rare and fragile window into the natural world. A world where every living thing lives in harmony with the powerful forces of nature. A world where the forces of nature prevail and men must be in tune or perish. Visitors fortunate enough to experience this wonderful place would do well to experience it on its own terms without imposing their own day-to-day -day values on this unique and precious experience. Although one can bring modern creature comforts along, everyone who visits this raw and wild land 
finds themselves roughing it just a bit. For some, that may mean sleepless frostbitten nights on an ice field at the foot of Mount McKinley. For others, it may mean a lukewarm shower, a dirt road, or an evening without television. Part of the magic of Alaska is that her most profound experiences may come when least expected. The beaten path may offer many wonders, but the moments that last forever may sneak up on you like the Chinook winds and linger like an Alaskan sunset. Thank you.